set her down at the first place it looks inhabited. What's wrong, Doug? I don't know. Sounds like we're running out of gas. Might be a cracked cylinder head. What's the matter? No gas. Hold on, we're gonna try for a landing. Don't land here. Try and find a place where there's some civilization. We haven't much choice. But you can't land in a place like this. We'll crack up. Leave him alone, George. We'll crash, I tell you. We'll crash. Brace yourself. Here we go. My guess we're in Iraq, about 100 miles from the Transjordan border. Stuck out in the middle of nowhere, eh? Thank heavens we're only stuck. If it hadn't been for Doug, we might have been killed. I was pretty lucky. I'm glad you weren't hurt, Tess. I'm glad none of us were hurt. That's not what he said. Don't be blind to his chivalry. Well, that goes for you, too, George. Thanks. Try and get Cairo on the radio and give him our position. I'll check the engine. Starns calling Cairo. George Starns calling Cairo. Come in, Cairo. Come in. Just as I thought. The fuel line's broken in half, and there's a cracked cylinder head, too. Oh, Doug, what are we going to do? Don't worry, Tess. I've been in much tougher spots than this, but I always manage to get back to my base. I'll get you back. Can you hear me, Taro? This is George Starns calling Cairo. Tell me, Doug. Why did you quit the Flying Tigers? Why'd you ask me that? Oh, I just wondered. Well, most of my buddies were assigned to different units, and oh, when you work and fight together for a long time, you sort of hate to split up. A lot of them were sent to Egypt, and I'd hoped to join them today in Alexandria, but looks like we're grounded for the duration. Well, in that case, I'd better forget about getting to Lisbon in time for the Clipper. I think you'll make it. George has probably contacted Cairo by now. They can get a plane out here in a few hours. Don't worry, Tess. Hello, Cairo. Come in, Cairo. Come in, Cairo. What's the matter? Can't you hear me? You getting anything? Not a squeak. These radio tubes are cold. Have you any spares? No. Totally unprepared, not even spare radio tubes. What are we to do now? Stay here and rot, I suppose. Ah, oh, wait a minute. I remember a group of buildings about 10 miles back. One of them looked like a castle. A castle here? Probably a mirage. Well, it looked like one big building with a lot of little buildings all around it. Maybe a settlement of some kind. Maybe. It's certainly worth looking into. Now, please, Everett, stop kidding yourself and stop kidding us. You know perfectly well there couldn't be a castle in this godforsaken wilderness. All we can hope for is to sit here and wait for a slow and nasty death. In the meantime, I'm going to get tired. Now, listen, we're going to start moving and you're going to help us. Hand me that parachute, will you, Tess? Of course, it would simplify matters if you and Tess wandered off and left me here trying to get Cairo. We got a pair of scissors in your handbag, Tess? Mm -hmm. Will you get them for me, please? Uh -huh. George, must you be so rude to Doug? Oh, he gets on my nerves, always hanging around you like a lovesick puppy. You've no right to say that. Haven't I? Well, at least he might wait until we're divorced. What are you doing? I'll need about a dozen strips as long as we can get them and about 18 inches wide. Here, give me a hand. 
It's not a military secret. Do you mind my asking you what you intend doing with these strips? I'm going to lay out a code design. The Air Force has a series of designs for the ground forces to communicate with the flyers. If one of our planes pass over, they'll see the message and send help. Give me the scissors, Tess. If one of our planes passes over, I don't suppose there's been a plane over here for months. You might lay out a signal for a couple of cases of scotch for me. Well, I guess that ought to do it. What does it mean? Send help ten miles to south. I hope you're right about that castle. I'd like to see some human beings, any human beings. Well, the natives to the northwest are definitely pro-Axis. This part of the desert's full of devil worshippers. What are they? A friend of mine in the Tigers told me about them. They're tough Arab tribes that live in the foothills and come out only to rob and kill. They mistrust all Europeans. They can be pretty nasty customers, so you better keep your eyes open. Wait here, I'll get my gun. Anyway, they'd have something to eat and drink so I wouldn't die of thirst. Here's your hat. We got a long, hard hike, so let's get going. Look over there. You were right. It does look like a castle. Probably a whole settlement. Let's hope the natives are friendly. Let's go. Ya Haji, could you adore the Lala Mabib? Rohayaklo. Now. We're looking ducks, aren't they? Let's ask that fellow where we are. I wonder what sort of language they use. Why don't you try French? All the French I know is a few phrases I picked up in the last war, you know. Promenade avec moi. Où sommes-nous? Gatsi, 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 gatsi. What's he gutsing about? Gatsi et Mali. Sheik, sheik. He's muttering something about a sheik. Sheik. I gather he's on his way. Well, the only thing we can do is to await developments. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing? If you lay your hands on me again, I'll punch you right in the beard. Take it easy. This is some sort of a sacred building, and you're probably sitting on one of their gods. The fellow seems to be a priest. See, he's begging the gods' pardon. If I knew his language, he'd be begging my pardon. Be careful, George. Devil worshippers. Devil worshippers? See the figure of the serpent carved in the wall? It's supposed to be the image of Satan. They regard the devil as the agent of the supreme god and worship him as the creator of evil. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, what's this, a May Day parade? See the bronze peacock he has on his staff? Devil worshippers believe that the peacock admitted the devil to the Garden of Eden and as a punishment was given a rasping voice but allowed to keep his feathers. Look at those native girls. They seem to be in a trance. Well, they've been hypnotized. Oh. Hypnotism is part of their religion. They developed it to perfection no white man's ever been able to approach. How long will they stay that way? For years, maybe. What? Or until their parents have made certain sacrifices to the church. Then the high priest will bring them out. Of it. I am Sheikh Ahmed Belnor. Welcome to the Kingdom of Gatsi. 
Well, that's what our friend was gutsying about. I'm afraid we haven't heard of Gutsy before. It'll give me the greatest pleasure to acquaint you with it. You speak excellent English, Your Highness. And French, and German, and occasionally a little Italian. Since many nations covet my country's oil, I thought it wise to be prepared. At present, the English have control. And we are in Iraq. Yes. I apologize for landing uninvited in your territory. Uninvited? But I assure you, not unwelcome. I'm George Torrance. Allow me to introduce my wife. Delighted, madame. And this is Douglas Everett. I'm honored. Your uniform, sir. Its identity escapes me. The Flying Tigers. Ah, yes. The Flying Tigers. I've heard of their exploits, as dramatic as they are daring. Those, I suppose, are your bodyguards. A few of my household troops, sir. A relic of barbarism, I know. I can quite understand the contempt with which you are at this moment regarding them. But I'm not. The Tigers weren't much to look at, either. They're well armed. Sheer preparedness. I cling to the fashions of my fathers, but I also like to move with the times. But about yourselves, I presume it's some misadventure, a most fortunate misadventure for me, that has carried you so far into the wastelands of Iraq. We were flying to Alexandria when our plane ran out of gas. Perhaps you could provide us with transportation to take us back to civ... I mean, the nearest big city. To civilization, you are about to say? Why hesitate, my dear sir? We know very well that we are barbarians. We're quite reconciled to the fact. We've had some 5,000 years to accustom ourselves to it. This sword is a barbarous weapon compared with your revolver. But Madame is standing all this time. Devins! Your Highness. What are you thinking of? Horses for our guests. Your Highness. I trust you'll accept the hospitality of my poor house. And transportation will be forthcoming later? Time enough to talk of that, Monsieur Torrance, when you've rested and recuperated from your adventure. You'll do me the honor of dining with me this evening. I hope you may find us not altogether uncivilized. I'm afraid Your Highness will have to uh, excuse our clothes. I think perhaps we can take care of that. Devins. Your Highness, you are in the confidence of our mistress of the robes. How does our wardrobe stand? Well, shipments from Europe have been kind of slow on account of the war. But in spite of that, up to date, Your Highness, up to date. Good. Then I hope, Madame, you may find among them some rag that you will deign to wear. I never hope to find modern gowns in the middle of the desert. I sometimes have the pleasure of entertaining European ladies in my solitudes. And I find there is nothing like a new gown to mitigate the terrors of exile for them. As for civilization, you know, I always have at my elbow one of its most finished products. Devin. You will recognize in Devons a representative of the ruling race. I assure you, he rules me with an iron hand. Not always in a velvet glove. Eh, Devons? <laughs> Your Highness will have his little joke. And now, Devons, the horses. We've kept our guests waiting much too long. Your Highness. Madame. Thank you. The horse, Madame. You were speaking of transportation, Mr. Torrance. Is your plane beyond repair? Completely, I'm afraid. Most unfortunate. However, I'll have your baggage sent for. Thanks. Your mounts, gentlemen. My home, madam. Gentlemen. 300 years old, but quite modern, despite that. I had always imagined a sheik would live in a tent. I believe that my ancestors, several times removed, realized even then that a tent in a desert would prove a little drafty. Madame's bath. 
You will see that the gentlemen are sufficiently refreshed. Yes, sir. My home is yours. I trust you'll be comfortable. Until later, then. Madam, the servants are waiting through the archway. The last entrance to the left. Thank you. Gentlemen, this way, please. How about those refreshments? Very good, sir. It's a long time to use all these. Yes. Many ladies. Many wives. Oh. His Highness has quite a family. Now, uh, team up. What about those Paris frocks? Dress. Dresses. Well, bring many. Oh, that's wonderful. And I'll have a choice. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to disorganize the rituals of the bath. I feel so helpless. Oh, here you are. Oh, hello. Nothing like a cold shower to buck you up. I feel like a new man. Quite a place he's got here, eh? Palace and fortress all in one. Yeah. Must have been tough to knock over before the days of the aeroplane. That's a pretty good flying field he's got down there, too. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he had a couple of measure smiths hidden away someplace. Well, down there? Well, it's his parade ground for reviewing his troops. Yeah. What's going on down there? Looks like they're getting together for a meeting of some kind. The evening prayers. Uh -uh. It's too late for evening prayers. Must be something special. I don't like the looks of it. Well, what's the matter with you, Everett? You're always so suspicious about everything. Hey, look, the sooner we get out of here, the better. Those fanatics are after our hides. I feel it. Nonsense. Come on, have a drink. I don't know. I have no idea where they marched her off to. Yeah, well, we'd better find her and don't let her out of your sight. Oh, don't get excited, Everett. Our host seems a perfect gentleman. You don't seem to be very worried about Tess. I couldn't follow her into the women's quarters, now could I? Besides, what business is it of yours? It's any man's business to be concerned for the safety of a woman. I do... Oh, stop behaving like a boy scout. His Highness will be down presently, sir. Your pleasure, sir. A large scotch and soda. Yes, sir. And you, sir? Hey, look, Devons, where's Mrs. Torrance? Mrs. Torrance is complete in her bath, sir. Well, it's taken her a long time. I'll make your mind easy, sir. The lady ain't gonna meet any undesirable characters. I gave strict orders to the female what took charge. Can you trust her? Absolutely, sir. She happens to be my wife, sir. Mrs. Devons, eh? Yes, sir. A uh, little brandy, hey, sir? Hey, look, Devons, can you tell us exactly where we are? They call this place Gotsi, sir. Yeah, 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 I know that. But where is Gotsi? They tell me this is the Syrian desert, but it's in Iraq, east of the Euphrates River, sir. We don't need a lesson in geography, my good man. What no. Miss Everett wants to know is how far are we from civilization? Well, I really don't know, sir. Not so very far, I dare say, uh, as the crow flies, sir. Unfortunately, we're unable to fly with the crow. How long does the journey take? To where, sir? How far is Baghdad? Well, as the crow flies, sir, they tell me about three weeks. As the crow flies, they tell you. You remember how long it took you, don't you? No, sir. I've never been to Baghdad, sir. Now, if you'll excuse me. That 
guy's a liar. You notice how he hedged? As though he'd had orders not to tell us anything. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Everett, I wish you'd settle down. You make me nervous. Just the same, I don't like him. Choice. His Highness picked dress. Oh, he did. Quite a complete service. Well, Tima, I'm afraid I'm uh, not the type. He said Lady looked awfully good in dress. Well, that's very kind of him, but uh, I'm afraid you'd better bring me something uh, more conservative. Conservative? <laughs> Your sheik knows a lot about women, doesn't he, Tima? <laughs> to the air when the sun begins to set. You'll find this room quite pleasant. To tell you the truth, I use it only on state occasions, like the present. Let me find you a comfortable seat. Mr. Torrance, Mr. Everett. I trust my mistress of the robes furnished you with all you require. Everything, thank you. I'm glad. I had hoped that perhaps your choice might have fallen on something more, uh, but no. I was wrong. Madame's taste is irreproachable. Now, are you all quite comfortable? Quite. Perfectly, thanks. Never felt better. Your Highness. Then, we'll go into committee upon your position here. Fine. I'm afraid you may find it rather disagreeable. Transportation bad, eh? Difficult journey in store for it? A long journey, I fear. But not exactly difficult. As I said earlier, the British Army is presently in control of Iraq. That shouldn't be an obstacle. Perhaps not. But it seems you have dropped from the skies at a most opportune moment. Uh, for me, that is. You see, a very special event took place in Mosul only a few hours ago. A trial presided over by the most august officers of the British Army. Court martial. Precisely. Three of my subjects, accused of spying, have been sentenced to death. Did Your Highness know these men? Oh, yes. They are my brothers. You mean, uh, they are some of your tribesmen? Not at all. They are sons of my father, uh, not of my mother. Oh, I'm sorry we had to intrude upon you at such a time. Oh, please, don't apologize. Believe me, your arrival has given me the greatest satisfaction. Evidently, your brothers were working for the Nazis. For what they believe is right, sir. My brothers are fanatics. But there is no fanaticism in me. How do you happen to be so different from your brothers? I was my father's oldest son. I was educated in the best schools of Europe. I shared all my prejudices and became an open-minded citizen of the world. My brothers, on the other hand, turned to their native culture. The religion of my people has always been a primitive idolatry and superstition. They worked themselves up to a high pitch of frenzy against the exploitation of Iraq. You knew the spy business was dangerous. Why don't you stop them? I suppose I might have imprisoned them or had them strangled. The traditional method of ending disagreements in our family. But why should I? Some of their arguments were quite excellent. In other words, you're working for the Nazis. Not entirely. But we have been offered an unusually attractive treaty by Herr Hitler. An agreement which might justify giving our full support to the Nazi movement. Don't you know yet that Hitler's treaties aren't worth the paper they're written on? I won't argue the point. The fact is, his offer at the moment is the most attractive. And the quicker we get out of here, the better I like it. How soon can we get transportation? That is just where the difficulty arises. What are you getting at? Materially, it might be managed. But morally, I fear it is, excuse the colloquialism, madame, no go. You mean you won't help us? Would your highness be good enough to explain? Well, 
since the news has spread that you three have dropped from the skies precisely at the moment when three princes of the royal house are threatened with death, my subjects have got into their heads that you've been personally conducted here by the evil one, whom they worship under the sign of the brass peacock. In my eyes, of course, your arrival is the merest coincidence. A charming coincidence. But my people hold primitive views. And the upshot of this is that we're going to be held as hostages to be exchanged for your brothers. A typical Nazi trick. That is not quite the idea, my dear sir. The fact is, my priests do not hold that an exchange is what the evil one decrees. Nor, to be quite frank, would it altogether suit my book. Not to get your brothers back again? You may have noted in history, madame, that family affection is seldom the strong point of princes. My sons are quite young. Were I to die, we are all mortal. There might be trouble about the succession. In our family, uncles seldom love nephews, nor kings their brothers. So you'd let your brothers die? That is not my only reason. Suppose it were possible that I could bully the British government into giving them up. Do you think it would sit down quietly under that humiliation? No, 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 dear lady. Assuredly, we should have a face-saving expedition. It would cost thousands of lives and millions of money. It wouldn't suit me at all. Surely you don't mean... Though I have absolute power over my subjects, if I defied their prejudices, evil though they may be, they would upset my throne tomorrow. What's that? Let me show you. It's the chant of vengeance, a promise to the evil one of an appeasement offering from a sacrificial altar. You see, my people's religion has not yet emerged from the mosaic stage of development. Let's cut the fancy talk and get to the point. The point? The point is, they demand an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. A life for a life. You mean to say... Unfortunately, I do. You will kill us. Not I, madam. My people. And if your brothers are shot, as they certainly will be, we're going to be killed in cold blood. Oh, not in cold blood, monsieur. There is nothing cold-blooded about the emotions of the worshippers when white goats, as their phrase goes, are to be sacrificed to the serpent. You'd let them kill a woman? Well, as to that point, they might not be too exacting. If Madame will be so gracious as to favor me with her society. I gather that you do not so please. Well, I scarcely hoped you would. I won't press the point, but the suggestion remains open. That's enough. Do we get out of here peacefully, or do we have to shoot our way out? Oh, no, Monsieur Everett. I've had your teeth drawn. That precaution was taken while you were at your bath. Besides, that wouldn't help a bit. You'd only be torn to pieces instead of... Your Highness. Forgive me. This is interesting. If you'll excuse me for a few minutes, I think I may have some news for you. To think that we were saved this morning only for this. There must be some way out. It's worse than a prison. This appearance of freedom, that manner of politeness and hospitality, it's unbearable. Like a cat playing with a mouse. Cat? More like a tiger. What can we do? What can we do? Doug, George, you must think of something. We might try and bribe Devins. Offer him every penny we have in the world. I'm afraid his price for his services will be a pretty stiff one, if they're for sale. But at least we can try. I wouldn't trust him. Let's see, it's about 10 o'clock London time. Let's see if we can get the BBC News. And the convoy continued on its way without further incident, according to the Admiralty's official communique. There is still no news of the plane overdue at Cairo. Airport officials believe Everett's plane was either attacked by enemy pilots operating from secret aerodromes in Iraq, or was forced down by mechanical trouble somewhere in the vast stretches of the Syrian desert. No news of sending out planes to look for us. Meanwhile, from British headquarters at Mosul comes news that the three Arab spies are awaiting tomorrow morning's firing squad with fanatical calm. These spies are believed to be... What's that? 
It's a wireless. Someone's sending a message. And the transmitter must be in this house. I can't make it out. What were they saying, George? I don't know. It's in code. Probably in communication with his agents in Mazul. If I could only get my hands on that wireless set for five minutes, I'd make his highness laugh out of the wrong side of his beard. Where do you suppose it is? Well, the billiard room's in there. That's the main room. Probably upstairs. It stopped. You'll be back soon. Don't let on we know anything. Now listen. The Sheik fell for you hook, line, and sinker the moment he set eyes on you. So you've got to try and keep him out of this room while Doug and I get to work on Devins. We may be able to send a message out. But suppose Devins won't help us. Don't bother your head about that. Leave him to us. Uh-oh. Here he comes now. I told you I might have some news for you. It has come. What news? The execution of my brothers is fixed for tomorrow. Then tomorrow? Yes. At sunrise. Meanwhile, I hope you'll regard my poor house as your own. I should advise you not to attempt to pass the palace gates, for my brothers are very popular, and my people most vindictive. Besides, there are 300 miles of almost impossible country between you and the nearest British post. Then how do you happen to hear this news? Did that puzzle you? You don't guess? I thought it might be a shortwave radio or wireless. You observed nothing to confirm that idea? No. I may tell you then that your guess was correct. I am in communication with distant cities by wireless. Then you have a wireless expert here? Devins again, that invaluable fellow. He is my operator. And with whom do you communicate? Do you think that quite a fair question, Mr. Everett? Does it show your usual tact? I have my agents. I can say no more. And now, madame, shall I ring for Tima to see you to your room? If you please. No, just a minute. Won't you please bring about an exchange? Your brother's lives for hours. I'm sorry, madame, but that is impossible. No whisper of your presence here must ever reach the British army or, again, excuse the vulgarism, my goose is cooked. What you really mean is that you're afraid to defy these, these devil worshippers. You haven't the courage. You abuse the privilege of your sex in order to taunt me with cowardice. Besides, you can't read my mind. I may be only playing a little joke on you. I hope you've observed that I have a sense of humor. It's a pity your intentions don't match your charm, Your Highness. Good night, George. Good night. Good night. Good night, madame. Good night. Your Highness, the high priest is waiting. Oh, show him in. Oh. Gentlemen, I want you to have the pleasure of meeting our high priest. He is, in a manner of speaking, my Archbishop. Your Highness, the High Priest. This is the High Priest of the Serpent God. Enam. His grace reminds me of some arrangements for tomorrow's ceremony. Allow me to introduce you. Hadal Rajal Nel Shaitan. Monsieur Torrance. Monsieur Everett. His grace. Weinemra. Mustak Belha Maushi Maharuf. What's bothering him now? He asked about the lady. I told him her fate has not yet been decreed. Please excuse his manners. He regards you, I regret to say, as unclean creatures. Perhaps it'd be best if I bid him farewell. El Rudda Ilaradda. No, El Rudda Ilaradda. His grace says au revoir until tomorrow. Gadda Najuz Dalahwanna. What did he say? He says that tomorrow our brothers will be avenged. You don't know how my faithful subjects are looking forward to tomorrow's ceremony. I can't stand this cat and mouse business any longer. Why, you dirty, smooth tongue. Dignity, my dear fellow, dignity. There's no reason why we shouldn't behave like civilized beings. How would you like to pass the time? I'm sorry I can't offer you any shooting. What do you say to a game of billiards? No? Then good night. If there's anything you want, just ring for Devon. Good night. Tima! Yes, madam. 
That dress His Highness selected for me. Dress? I'm going to put it on. Well, bring it, the dress. Oh, His Highness dress. Yes, madam. watch on our friends. A man who's flown with the flying tigers is likely to take chances. Very good, Your Highness. But if they try to corrupt me, sir, with money, sir, shall I let on and take the bait? Bribe you? In that case, you may do as you please. I have the most implicit confidence in you, Devons. Thank you, sir. I know that anything they might offer you would have to be paid in English currency, and you dare not show your face among the English. You have a very comfortable position here. Well, I'm most grateful, Your Highness. And you don't want to give the hangman a job. No, sir. So I rely entirely on your discretion, Your Highness. much for me to hope that you are wearing this gown at my suggestion? I'm wearing it for my husband. I wanted our last night together to be as perfect as possible. If you'll excuse me. Spare me a few moments. I want to speak with you seriously. I'm afraid we have nothing to talk about. I feel for you, madame. I do indeed. I would do anything. Anything? But help us. Why should I have the will to save Monsieur Torrance? He is your husband. That doesn't recommend you to me. And from my observations, I venture to guess it doesn't greatly recommend him to you. Uh, Monsieur Everett, on the other hand, is the heroic type. And yet, if I may add, without indiscretion, the interest you show in him, the most friendly interest, I'm sure, doesn't recommend him to me, either. After all, you could hardly expect me to show favor to a man who holds the attention of the woman with whom I've become infatuated. people have taken full precautions. However, they will find no objections as long as you're in my escort. Pardon me, Chance. Oh, Devin. Yes, sir. I take it you can guess what we have on our minds. I ain't no end at guessing, sir. I'd rather you put it plain. You know what's in store for us in the morning. I've heard a few things, sir. You're not going to stand by and see three of your own people murdered. My own people? What has my own people ever done for me? The first thing what England ever done was to put me in a reformatory for pinching a silver rattle off a young aristocrat and a perambulator. You can't blame England because you're a thief, Devons. The old lady would have bashed me blinking face in if I'd ever come home empty-handed. Might have saved somebody else the trouble. Now, look here, you ain't no one to be passing any insulting remarks. He doesn't mean it, Devins. We only thought you might be willing to help us. I guess we were wrong. Yes, I guess you was, sir. If you took me for a VC hero, what had laid down my life for England home and beauty. I get your point, Devins. But the question now is, how much do you want for getting us out of here? To get you out? Why, if he was to offer me millions, how could I do that? By sending this message to Cairo. Oh. So that's your game, eh? Do you know what you're risking? If his highness ever suspected as you was getting word through to Cairo, why, ten to one, he'd wipe you off the slate, just like that, without waiting for tomorrow. But why should he suspect? Well, um... How much have you gents got to offer? 
Well, we don't have much cash with us. We can give you the balance in IOUs. How do I know you'll pay them? There are people in the world who keep their word, you know. Even to a rat like you, Devons. I'd advise you to keep a civil tongue in your head, Mr. Everett. Don't forget I have you in the hollow of me hand. And the hollow of your hand is a very nasty place to be in. That's why we're willing to pay to get out of it. Come on, come on, what'll it be? Well, um, how about a little first installment in cash? Be it ever so humble. Never mind the chicken feed. Is this all you got? It's all we have with us. How about the lady? She has a little jewelry. I'll take it. Every little helps, you know. Now, how about the balance? Would uh, a thousand apiece do? A thousand apiece? Three thousand pounds? Why, you're joking, Mr. Torrance. What good would three thousand pounds be to me in England? Why, well, I'd have to start the valeting again. Now, now. If he wants me to do this job, I've got to have enough money to make a gentleman out of me. I'm afraid it would take more than that to make a gentleman out of you, Devin. Well, if you ain't the queerest lot, your lives is hanging by a hair, and you're passing insulting remarks. All right, we'll double the bid. Two thousand apiece. Ah, you'll have to make it more, sir. Double it again. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you signs a high OU for fifteen thousand pounds, which I as here already made out, I'll see what can be done. Well, if you aren't the most... Well, if your lives ain't worth five thousand pounds apiece, nothing doing. Look at the risk I'm taking. I ain't charging you for that, you know. We appreciate your generosity, Devin. Yes, sir. Now, if you'll sign, sir. Not so fast. You'll get it after you sent the message. Where's the wireless room? Upstairs, sir. Let's go. We'll watch you send it. Ah, no, sir. That's impossible. I couldn't take a chance of being seen with you, not for millions. This has to be done secret-like. Now, wait a minute. How do we know you'll send a message? My word is a gentleman, sir. You'll have to trust me. Otherwise, the whole thing is off. As one gentleman to another, Devins, you don't mind being paid after you've done the job. I'm very sorry, sir, but I do. You know the code letters for Cairo? Yes, sir, I know them. All right, you've got the message. Now get busy. We'll be waiting when you come back. Watch you are, sir. Oh, uh, don't forget the jewelry. I don't know how my faithful subjects are looking forward to tomorrow's ceremony. Seems to me you're taking advantage of the war to even up a few personal hates. The war will be over someday. You will regret this murder. You're very unfair, madam. Why hold me responsible for your predicament? Who else is responsible? Chance, fate, gods, providence, whoever or whatever pulls the strings. Did I force your plane to crash? And once you set foot here, it was utterly beyond my power to save you. If I raised a finger to thwart the determination of my people, it would be the end of my rule, perhaps of my life. No, no, madame. I cannot risk it. You cannot risk it. You dare not. You're a coward. Forgive me if I smile at your tactics. You want to goad me into chivalry. You are a brave woman. If you have the courage to die, why not have the courage to live? Not as the wife of a dissipated husband, but as the absolute queen of an absolute king. I don't speak to you of romantic love. I respect you too much to think you accessible to silly sentiment. But you would be my first and only queen. Your son, if you gave me one, would be the prince of princes. All my other sons would bow down to him and serve him. From the blending of the flower of the east with the flower of the west would be born the man of the future. The man who would possess the strength, the wisdom, the courage to rule the destiny of the world. Wonderful words, Your Highness. The devil must have put them in your mouth. He's sending. Those aren't the call letters for Carol. He's double crossing the not sending any message at all. And now we are stuck here. Wait a minute. If those tubes will fit the radio in the plane, 
We got the hives. Yeah, they'll fit all right. Now, if we can get out of here. Yeah, but how about Devins? He'll be back for his jewelry. Hey, here he comes now. I've done it, sir. I sent the message. Are you sure it got through? Yes, sir. Straight through to Cairo, as clear as a bell. Now about paying me off? Pay you off? No, no, you don't. No, we didn't. It was over there. We came from the west. There's a North Star. That way. They won't get very far at night. Of course, there'll be water. I don't know, but we gotta keep moving. It shouldn't be far. Can you make it, Tess? I'm all right. George Tran's calling Carol. George Tran's calling Carol. Can you hear me, Carol? Come in, Carol. 
Come in, Carol. Did you get him? Only a buzz. A faint buzz. Wait a minute. No, it's nothing. Can't you hear me, Carol? Come in, Carol. Come in, Carol. You keep on trying. I'll try to hold them off. Get back out of sight, guys. west of Gatsy. Please hurry. Can you hear me, Cairo? There's too many of them. We might as well give up. There's no use getting you shot. on your part, my gallant friend. Where's Monsieur Torrance? He's in the cabin. Hassan, Ali. Did you get your message through? Answer me. Did you get your message through? No. The most noble but unfortunate sacrifice. Monsieur Torrance has laid down his life in vain. George! We'll adhere to our program without further delay. Hassan! Well, Monsieur Everett, you've come to the last lap. It had to be run sometime, you know. And this is it, eh? This is where the final rites begin. Uh, don't be alarmed about Madame Torrance. She'll be here in due time. If you want to save your neck, you better not go through with it. I cannot deny my people the pleasure of a double vengeance. No. I have a long score against you swaggering lords of creation. And by all the gods, I mean to see some of it paid. <laughs> Bringing Madame Thomas. Ask her to. Hello, Elsa.
Ah. I apologize, Madame for nanas, my people. Their fanaticism is beyond my control. How much time have we left? Until the great gong sounds. Then you will be led to the sacred enclosure outside. And oh, by the way, you need have no fear of the ceremony being protracted. It will be brief and, I trust, painless. My people are not incapable of cruelty, but I've resolutely set my face against it. But forgive me. I am for the moment not a king, but a priest. You must observe a certain dignity. She will mutila elada. El mas y el baida. Ila ele manja el lord. Wackful. Must I do violence to my feelings by including you in the approaching ceremony? There is still time. Immovable? So be it. Wakudu. Chivalrous and ill-advised, Monsieur Everett. You have laid impious hands upon their chief. My colleagues insist upon subjecting you to a process of expiation, a most interesting but painful ritual. It's too bad that you must suffer these indignities, Monsieur Everett. But after your sudden outburst, death alone will not appease the fury of my people. I myself have always been opposed to bloodshed, but this medieval punishment has been created by my priests to... I think. Do me next We autocrats are very badly brought up. We're not accustomed to having our desires resisted. It's not too late, even now, to consider my offer of yesterday. This is it. We're going on in. Proceed with flight plan. My guard informs me that one of the planes has landed. So Mr. Torrance outwitted us. He lied like a gentleman. I didn't think he had it in him. Done anything to Mr. Everett? Oh, yes, Mr. Everett. I'll have him brought back. Well, what goes on? You, come. What are you waiting for? Douglas Everett's the name. Boy, am I glad to see you. This is Mrs. Torrance. Captain Carson, United States Army Air Forces. Where's the man who sent that message? He was shot while transmitting it. Ah, oh, yes, the most unfortunate affair. Who are you? I am Sheikh Ahmed Bel Noor, Emperor of Gatsi, Lord High Commander of the Dasnids. I'm Captain Carson, the United States Army Air Forces. I understand you're holding these people. I demand their immediate release. Demand? Are you prepared to discuss terms? It's the policy of the American government never to bargain with gangsters. Our terms are unconditional. I'm afraid, Captain, I'm not impressed. Is that so? Very well, Sergeant. Captain Carson calling squadron commander. Captain Carson calling squadron commander. Proceed with attack. Proceed with attack.
bombs. Yeah, and they'll blow this place to bits in no time. That was a warning. I'll give you just three minutes to release these people. Otherwise, we'll destroy your palace. Are you suggesting that I should surrender, Captain? Uh, I didn't quite catch your name. Captain Carson. Ah, yes, Captain Carson. Why on earth should I surrender? No doubt your comrades can destroy my palace. They can drop their thunderbolts directly on this temple. But if they do, not only I, but all of us here will be escorted to our last abode in fragments. I doubt whether that prospect will be alluring either to you or Monsieur Everett or Madame. No, Captain Carson. I call your bluff. The last bomb fell in the ravine. The next one will be closer. Proceed, Sergeant. Captain Carson to squadron commander. Captain Carson to squadron commander. Proceed with attack. Proceed with attack. My priests and my people have a superstitious dread of these eggs of the flying goddess. They fear injury to the sacred image. I bow to superior force. You may, if you wish, signal your commander. Then you accept our demands unconditionally. I'm afraid I must confess, Captain, that my game is up. I give in. This comes of falling behind the times. If I'd only had anti-aircraft guns. You're mighty lucky you hadn't. With all the tech. Captain Carson calling squadron commander. Captain Carson calling squadron commander. Withhold further attack. Withhold further attack. Acknowledge. Command given and acknowledge, sir. And now, if you'll assign us an escort through the crowd? Certainly. Askri, Rahum Ahum. Mrs. Torrance, Mr. Everett. Now it only remains for me to speed my parting guests. I hope we shall one day renew our acquaintance and talk over old times. Oh, not here. I plainly foresee that I should have to join the other king in exile. Yeah, well, if you ever get to Texas, be sure and look us up. We'd like nothing better than to return your hospitality, wouldn't we? It would be a pleasure. Thank you. We'll be at home as soon as we wipe your friend Hitler off the map. Uh, my ex-friend. Au revoir, madame. As I said before, your highness, it's a pity your intentions don't match your charm. Let's get out of here. It's the first time I've ever flown as a passenger, but this backseat driving is okay. She would probably have been a blasted nuisance anyway. 